My name is David Lorimer, and I'm speaking to you on the 19th of August from the southwest of France, the region where the Cathars used to be in the medieval period. These were people who, both men and women, thought that they were carrying the essence, the love message, the masculine-feminine reconciliation of the original Christianity. So I live in that area. This is where I'm sending you greetings from. As I said, it's the 19th of August, and today is the feast day of the movement that I'm associated with, um, with Peter Dunoff, Bain Duno. Here he is here. <clears throat> and on other years, I might be in the mountains, um, in the high lakes, the seven lakes, dancing the panurhythmi. So I wasn't able to do that this morning, and so I danced the panurhythmi instead in my garden with my dog next to me and I also watch the sunrise and which is one of the things um, that we do in the movement and to see the first ray of the sun is an incredibly powerful moment of the day and you see the light spreading and the the sun rising so what I want to do um, is to give you a few reflections for the source of wonder and I'm going to begin with a formula from Peter Dunoff, which goes like this. May we have a heart as clear as a crystal, a mind as bright as the sun, a soul as vast as the universe, and a spirit as powerful as God, and one with God. This is the aspiration, the formula of the follower of the disciple and it's something i use every day it's a very powerful formula the purity of the heart the clarity of the mind the vastness of the universe in which we are all a part i'm going to read you now um, a poem that i wrote earlier in the year um, which is called easter orchid and it's about death and rebirth Stem shoots straight up, emerging reborn from the dark and fecund womb of moist earth. Enfolded life spirals out from the center, unfolding intricate patterns of purple beauty into time and space. Expanding ecstasy reaches out in fullness of being only to contract again to circle round, refolding back into the tomb of earth. We too sleep and wake, forgetting and remembering, dying and rising again. Our souls ascend as crystal radiance, intimately interlaced into celestial light. So we're living, we're always living at a time of death and rebirth. The old passes away, the new comes in, the spring arrives after the winter. So we are going through this period of upheaval, of disturbance, um, but we have the possibility for something new um, to come out of this. So I, I see um, this transformative process that we're going through as full of possibilities, but we have to be vigilant we have to be courageous. We have to imagine and co-create the new. It's not going to arrive without our participation. And in that respect, part of my work um, is with young people. And I have a program called Inspiring Purpose, which you can find at inspiringpurpose.org.uk on sustainable futures. And we've reached hundreds of thousands of young people over the last 15 years. And what they're able to do is tap into their vision, their source, live from the inside out and define their goals and aspirations for the future and how they're going to contribute to a more sustainable, indeed a regenerated world. So in terms of how to nurture global transformation, education is obviously one of the key ways, um, but also we need a transformation of our worldview. My friend Mark Gober has recently published a book called An End to Upside Down Living, which follows his book An End to Upside Down Thinking, in which he, he 
looks at the science of consciousness and all the findings that are emerging from that. And he sees that um, we have a picture of reality based on scientific materialism, based on the idea that the mind is a, a product of the brain, that the brain produces consciousness, and which is also gives primacy to separation. And this is what we need to reverse. We need to give primacy to the whole, to the planet, to the collective, primacy to interdependence, not separation, primacy to what Irvin Laszlo calls the planetary ethic. And, and I call this an ethic of interconnectedness because I think that science and psychology and ecology and mystical experience all point to the oneness of life, the oneness of mind, and the fact that we are all intrinsically interconnected. And I think the second thing is that we need to be living from the inside out. Our whole culture is extroverted. We take reality to be what's on the outside, when in fact our sense of reality is our consciousness. It's what's on the inside. And this is what we need to reconnect with in terms of reconnecting to the source, because the source is in us. We are an expression of that one mind, of that one source. And that's the great realization that we need all to come to individually and then act on it. So this represents the primacy of consciousness, the primacy of the inner, rather than the primacy of matter and the primacy of the outer. Our lives are an expression of our intent and our consciousness. So as I say, um, we, we emerge from this one mind and we have a series at the Scientific and Medical Network going at the moment, a series of webinars under the heading One Mind, One Planet, One Health. And what we're doing, this is www.mysticsandscientists.org, is we're putting on a, a weekly event um, on a whole variety of topics um, in you know, medicine, psychology, um, the environment, and, and uh, the, the sacred feminine, um, revolutionary love with Michael Lerner. And we're trying to expand horizons so that people can think more broadly and have a real reverence for life. Now I'd like to come back to um, Bain Seduno, Peter Dunoff, um, because I think he has a very important contribution to make to the renewal of our time. He was the prophet of what he called a culture of love, and I call this a culture of love and wisdom. And these were based on five essential principles, not beliefs, but principles. And these principles are love, wisdom, truth, justice, virtue, or goodness. And it's on these principles that the renewal of culture depends. And beliefs divide, principles unite. So we can all believe in these principles and we can all embody these principles. I'd like just to say a little bit more about how he understands the word love, because it's, it's a word that many people feel is overused. But in my view, we don't take it seriously enough. We don't take love and the power of love seriously enough. And he explains that there are four levels of love. There's the level which is the personal sentiment. Then there is brotherly and sisterly love. And then love transforms into what he calls a force in the mind. And this is where you have people like Schweitzer and Gandhi and Martin Luther King, who make love the central plank, the central principle of their lives, love and nonviolence. And then finally, you have love as a principle in the spirit. And this love is what harmonizes the opposites, what transcends the polarities. And, and this is really where we're going in terms of the evolution of human consciousness, that we are gradually evolving, very gradually evolving and towards cosmic and divine consciousness. But it's a slow process and one in which we can all take part and one which we can maybe slightly accelerate by our small individual and group efforts. Now, in closing, I'm going to sing you um, one of the songs, very powerful song, which I was actually singing this morning um, on my walk. And, and this is called The Spirit of God, Dukhat Boji. 
And it's the Spirit of God which fills our hearts with love. Duhat Boji Duhat Venchni Duhat Sviati Duhat Blagi This is the Spirit of God <clears throat> that fills our hearts with love. And this is just what we need to do at the moment, to fill our hearts with love and to spread this love. Finally, I'm going to read another poem that I wrote a couple of years ago, and it's called Essence. And you'll see why. To see and to be seen to hear and to be heard, to open and to be opened, to be touched and to touch, to be loved and to love. This is the fruit of light distilled, the woven texture, the feel, the taste, the priceless currency of life together. So wherever you are watching this, I send you many blessings for your life, for your work, and in whatever you can do and whatever we can do together in this transformative journey that we are all on. Thank you and goodbye.